Okay, so thank you everybody for joining us today for our MIFOS uh, Google Summer of Code Ask Me Any session. We want to use this time today to give you some more background on the MIFOS initiative, the project we'll have you applying for, and the process we'll go through in selecting our students and really what we're looking for in ideal candidates. And we want to give you the chance to get any questions you have answered firsthand from the mentors who you'll be hopefully working with this summer. So we're just going to go through a little bit around who and what is MIFOS, like why what we do matters. We'll get a chance to meet some of our mentors. We'll talk about our process. We'll give a brief overview of some of the potential projects, and then we'll move into the actual questions and answers. So the MIFOS initiative is an award-winning 501c3 global nonprofit dedicated to ending poverty one line of code at a time. And this will be our seventh year participating in Google Summer of Code. And for us, it's always been an incredibly valuable program, not only to you know, directly add code that benefits our community and helps advance our social mission of accelerating financial inclusion for the world's poorest, but it also allows us to build that next generation of contributors who gives back to our community long into the future. So many of the mentors who you'll be working with are also former ESOC participants and many of the individuals that are key leaders in our community helping to maintain our various applications were all former ESOC students. So in case you're not too familiar with what financial inclusion is, you can briefly you know, look at this slide here, but basically it's enabling the poor to create a better life for themselves and their family by having affordable and responsible access to the full range of financial services that they need to have proper, you know, access to credit, have a safe place to save, have access to typical products you'd expect like insurance, payments, etc. And so we've been, you know, working with microfinance for the past 15 years now, the past 10 years focused on financial inclusion. And a big focus of our project right now is digital financial services. So as I stated earlier, you know, we're a global nonprofit, but we're quite an interesting nonprofit as we sit at the intersection of, you know, both open source and fintech as well as financial inclusion. And so we uniquely use the cloud, mobile, and our open source community to transform the delivery of digital financial services to the world. And so, you know, we've been going at this for close to, to 15 years now when the original incarnation of NIFOS began at Grameen Foundation. So we started out as in what I'd like to refer to as our generation one software as a project at the Grameen Foundation Technology Center. And over the past, you know, 10 to 15 years, we've been continuing to evolve that software over time. And our Google Summer of Code interns have been a key part in that evolution for us as well. So Generation 1, uh, we referred to as Mesos 2, and that was launched in around 2006. And that was focused on simply being an MIS for microfinance. But in 2013, uh, we launched the first formal version of our Generation 2 software called Mesos X. And with that, we provided the industry uh, the first you know, open source API driven platform for financial inclusion. So long before the industry was talking about or long before financial services in general was talking about open banking or open APIs, we were doing it with, with Mifos X. And so Mifos X is what we now call Apache Finerac as we donated the software to the Apache Software Foundation. So the Mifos X platform is now referred to as Apache Finerac. And then on top of it, we have a suite of web and mobile apps that both staff and clients use, and we'll get into more details on those. But generation two is where a number of our projects will focus on. And then we'll also be allowing students to focus on generation three this year. And I'll talk a bit more about that in the, the slide deck. But just wanted to you know, give a brief sense of the impact that our software has been able to achieve over this past decade. So right now, between Generation 1 and Generation 2 of the software, there are more than 7 million clients worldwide who are reached by more than 300 financial institutions that use the software. And these institutions and individual clients are supported by 
our network of partners. So partners are local companies who take the open source software and either provide support or hosting around it, or they build entirely new solutions on top of it. And so these institutions that are being reached are either using the Mesos X distribution, or they might be using an app or a system that's built by one of our partners. But collectively, you know, we're having a major impact around the world. And as we build out our Generation 3 technology and focus more on digital financial services, we have the potential to exponentially grow the impact and growth as we focus on direct mobile uh, client-facing solutions that really have the power to transform the sector and help us achieve our mission of bringing financial services to the billions that are unbanked in a much more dramatic and accelerated fashion. So now is the time when I briefly just wanted to allow the mentors to introduce themselves on the call. These aren't photos of all our mentors. Many of these are actually just former GFUS students, but uh, I'll let the mentors who are on the call introduce themselves now and just they can mention, you know, where they're coming from, like the role they've had within the Mifos community in the past and what potential projects they would be mentoring. So I'll just briefly unmute our mentors and allow them to introduce themselves. So Alex, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Alex. Um, I am involved uh, on and off with Mifos uh, for a couple of years now. Um, it started uh, with a commercial project that I did for a nonprofit in Uganda. Um, uh, I was involved with um, what was called Mifos X, um, and I um, contributed a couple of proprietary modules that they needed. Um, yeah. Last year, I helped uh, out to introduce Mifos to a Mexican bank. Um, they started um, a microloan project, um, a local microloan project with Mifos, based on Mifos. Um, that was quite interesting. And um, this is the second time that I'm a Google Summer of Code mentor. Yeah, and that's, uh, I'm currently located in Serbia. Um, I was uh, for 10 years in Lisbon and I uh, decided this year to move <laughs> to have a little bit of an adventure. And um, yeah, I think that's all. Okay, thanks, Alex. I didn't know that you had, had moved. So I hope the, the move is going well. And then Alex will, you know, likely. Yeah. Yeah, not sure exactly which project he'll be mentoring on, but likely it'll be something, you know, that's on the, the back end for more of a full stack project. So thanks, Alex. And then Anthony, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, I saw your intro down there, Anthony. Thank you for, for calling in today. And then Virendra, do you want to introduce yourself if you can come off mute? Yeah, hi, uh, Edward. So I, I have nine hours to okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. So I think I and nine joined together. Okay. And both are using the same link and uh, the name appearing twice. Oh, so I, I'll introduce myself first. I think I'm working with MIFOS for the last two years. And, uh, and I'm also part of uh, a company named Conflux Technologies who is building on top of MIFOS and helping uh, uh, these banking issues. So I'd be happy to work with, uh, last time I was a mentor. Again, would like to be mentoring and doing something magic uh, in the product. Thanks, Tiru. And then Nayan, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Nayan here. Um, uh, I'm uh, one of the volunteers with uh, MIFOS initiative from uh, almost uh, uh, seven years. And uh, uh, I've been uh, part of a uh, couple of uh, Google Summer of Code and a uh, couple of uh, Google Coding. Uh, so this year, I have not decided which project I'll be mentoring. Uh, uh, 
but I'll, I'll be very happy to like you know, work with uh, all of you and like, you know, if you have any questions uh, across any of the projects I'll be very happy to answer answer them thank you Nayan and then Ishan I'll let you introduce yourself uh, hi am I audible yeah we can hear you uh, hi everyone my name is Ishan uh, I am based out of uh, Amsterdam, and I've been involved with Mythos for the last four years, I think. Uh, I started my journey as a student, and then uh, stuck with the community as a volunteer, and then mentoring students in the GSOCs uh, that were to follow. Uh, this year, I will be mo uh, mentoring any of the Android projects, but if you have uh, any questions related to Android or Java, just feel free to reach out to me, and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you, Ishan. And then Mohit, I'll unmute you and let you introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Mohit. I am based out of Delhi and uh, I am a participant uh, and I am looking forward to contribute to the mobile wallet project. Okay, thanks, Mohit. Sorry I didn't introduce you earlier. I was confusing uh, you with, no, I thought you were a different Mohit, so I wasn't paying attention to the last name, but thank you. Oh, Pranjal, do you want to unmute yourself and give a brief intro? Yeah. Uh, hi, Ed. Hello, everyone. My name is Pranjal Goswami, and I am based out of Bangalore, India. I have been associated with MeForce for the past uh, three years now, and I have mentored for the past two years. So my skill set lie in uh, UI design and user experience, uh, though I have also worked with uh, the MeForce backend as well. Uh, but if you guys have any questions around Angular JS or user experience design, you can shoot an email to me. Uh, this year, I uh, will be mentoring a project uh, which is titled uh, Community App User Experience Enhancements. So if you guys are interested in that project, uh, also if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. Thanks, Tanjo. And then Rahul. Hello everyone, uh, I am Rahul, I, this is my first time I'm mentoring for MeForce. I am working in a Delhi based startup as a backend developer in Java. I am working in Java for last 1.5 years. I will be mentoring this, this year in MeForce uh, for Moja Loop integration or any other backend project which uh, I have not yet decided. Thanks Rahul. Happy to have you on board this year. And then Tarun, I'll let you briefly introduce yourself. Hello everyone. My name is Tarun Mitke and I'm associated with MIPOS for almost two years now, initially as a GSOC aspirant. But yeah, I was not selected in the first year, but I just uh, stuck with the community and then I was selected the next year. And since then I've been contributing as a volunteer, as a GCI mentor. And this is the first time I'll be mentoring uh, GSOC students. And I'll be mentoring most probably the Android client project. So you may contact me related to that project. Thank you, Tarun. Okay, I've got a couple more slides to go through and then we'll open the floor to, to questions. So, you know, this is just uh, once again focusing that, you know, really at the heart of our project and what we do is our global community. So this is a shot from a couple years ago at one of our global summits. But, you know, we unite our community of not only the users and predictions of our software, but also the local partners that are providing the support and building solutions needed to reach the poor. And then lastly, you know, our developers and our volunteers who are all a key part of our, our global mission to innovate and build new solutions for financial inclusion. And so we really, you know, try and make a focus of uh, making our interns a deep and embedded part of our community, helping them attend the uh, local events that might be occurring and really immersing yourselves and being a, a key part of the, the overall group working towards our social mission. So I just wanted to briefly touch on, you know, at a high level, the tech stack that we have and the, the resources available 
and then we'll talk a little bit about the process and then we'll talk specifically about some of the projects and then move into the questions. So this year, you know, we are going to try and have a number of projects on our Generation 3 software. So Generation 3 of MIFOS or what we call Apache Finerac CN or Finerac Cloud Native is now, you know, just formally being brought to market and the first official release through Apache will be made very soon. But we've spent the past, you know, two years uh, designing and architecting this brand new solution, you know, culminating all of the knowledge and expertise we've gained over the past decade and putting it into a brand new and modern cloud native microservices architecture that really provides the industry as a whole an application fra framework for rapidly building digital financial services applications. So we'll have a number of projects for the first time on this related to generation three. And then around Finerac and Mifos X, we'll have projects related to the platform. So that'll both be, you know, core modules on the platform or integrations of the platform or enhancements to the platform itself. And then we'll have projects related to the web app, which is the primary, you know, interface that staff use to interact with Mifos or Finerac as their core banking system on a daily basis. And then we also have the suite of Mifos X uh, web and mobile apps that are used by either you know, clients or staff to either do their operations in the field or directly interact with their accounts. And so we'll both have web and mobile app projects related to primarily MIFOSEC, but some related to Finerac CN as well. And then hopefully, you know, as you've been exploring the community, you've seen uh, the documentation we have in place. Our APIs are well documented. Our functionality is well documented through the user manual and hopefully by accessing that, getting your builds up and running, utilizing the demo servers, you've been pretty familiar with the, the tech stack and how it's used and how it works. We're also this year trying to get in place uh, more mock-ups and design documents prior to students actually working. So we've got a GitHub repository that one of our former students created that has a number of mobile and web mock-ups there. We'll be continuing to expand upon those uh, prior to projects kicking off. And then lastly, you know, you've probably become deeply familiar with GitHub issues or JIRA, as this is where we have our issues listed and where all of our tickets will be and where you'll track your work throughout the summer as well. And now I just wanted to, you know, briefly note, and we'll talk more about this on the call, but what we're, you know, looking for in our ideal candidates for GSOC. So really, you know, as we're looking at uh, the students we're looking to to bring on. We want to see you know a deep passion and uh, high high energy and motivation for not only our project but our social mission. We want our students to be committed to becoming long term members of the community. So really you know understanding what your potential role could be in the project, uh, the impact you're having through our social mission, and how you know the technology you're building can impact the poor. And we really also, you know, are looking for those individuals that demonstrate the potential to become, you know, future leaders of the community, whether it be helping to maintain, you know, the applications in the future, becoming future mentors, or many of our our former GSOC participants have also gone on to, to work for many of the partners and fintech companies that make up our, our ecosystem. So really, you know, apart from just having uh, a strong, you know, technical knowledge and a strong skill set in terms of being a great coder. We're looking for students that are really passionate, committed, and want to be a, a part of our community for the long haul. And so in making a successful application, you know, hopefully you looked at our blog post and you saw a number of tips that Ishan had there. But you know, we want to just emphasize to get your uh, application submitted early, like a draft out there so we can help you in refining it and giving you feedback. We want to make sure you know you have in place a detailed project plan that has you know a calendar of deliverables, milestones you're looking to hit, and mock-ups and suggestions of the technical approaches you're going to take. And if you need you know so, uh, good sample ones to to look at as a great example, some of our mentors can provide those. And then we also really want to encourage all of our students to be you know very transparent and participate actively in the community through the public uh, communication channels like our mailing list. So we highly encourage, if you haven't done it yet, to introduce yourself on the list just to let others know, you know that this is the project you're considering to apply for. And then we can't emphasize more you know, about 
a uh, key part of your application being uh, making a pull request, you know, hopefully more than one, but contributing uh, throughout this application period and continuing to do so uh, during the evaluation period as you know, we closely monitor these contributions to get a good sense of not just your your skill set, but also your ability to communicate and work within the processes of the community and show that you're familiar with the open source practices and processes that you'll need to become deeply aware of throughout your internship. And then lastly, you know, we just want to, to see you being out there collaborating, helping your, your fellow peers in the community. So we really value these uh, interactions that you have both from a contribution and collaboration level within the community as a key overall part of the, the application. And then in terms of the process, you know, you need to apply by the deadline that Google has in place. So make sure you don't miss that deadline and you get your final application in there. Also, before you've you know, submitted that application, make sure you've done at least one pull request and then provide a link to the pull request or the code that you've submitted in your application. And then once all the applications have been in and the, the deadline is passed, you know, we do an initial shortlisting of candidates and then we'll reach out to the ones who've made the shortlist for interviews via Skype. Typically, we try and do at least two interviews with our candidates. And then once we've done that interview, you know, we'll begin to go through the selection process and request slots through Google and hopefully be able to, to work with the, the students we'd like to for Google Summer of Code based on the slots that Google allocates to us. But we'll be making our evaluations based on, you know, the application, the interviews, and really your overall body of work and your interactions with the community. Uh, from the day you you joined our community, so I'll hold any questions on that to the latter portion when we open the floor to our mentors answering the questions. So I'll just briefly, you know, skim through a slide or two on some of our projects, and then get to the AMA portion of the the meeting. So as I said earlier, you know, this year, uh, even though the code base is relatively new and we just have it out there, we're trying to get a number of projects. Uh, fully scoped out for Finrac CN. So one of a couple of the ones we're sure are going to happen are the live API documentation using Spring Docs for Finrac CN. We also want to build out an SMS and email notifications microservice. We're going to be working on the second version of the mobile field officer app for Finrac CN. So last year, Rajan uh, worked on the initial version of that. So there'll be a number of architectural and functional enhancements there. And then provided we can get uh, more of like the back end in place for a number of the group and center based lending procedures, we are looking to have a student work on a web UI for microfinance institutions on top of Finrac CN. And then on top of, you know, the MIF effect or the Finrac platform, we'll be, you know, having a number of modules that are either directly part of Finerac or uh, integrated with it. But one of the new ones we, we just listed on our project page is working on both a chatbot adapter and then some of the core components of the chatbot itself. So we put that on the ideas list. So if that's something that you're interested in, take a look at that. But that's something we're looking to work on for this year. We're also going to have, hopefully, you know, a student that might work on a machine learning project related to you know, helping improve the credit monitoring and credit risk analytics. So that's another fairly new project that we hadn't had on the list until recently. And then we're hoping to potentially work with a student that will continue the work that was begun over the past two years on our payment gateway. And this is a very important project for us as it will allow the seamless integration with the mobile money APIs that are opening up around the world. And then we've got a number, you know, of core uh, modules within the platform itself that the community has requested support for over the years. And if we have, you know, students that have a skill set and some of this domain knowledge, we'd, we'd like to find students for these projects. So these uh, center around having ad hoc reporting, so an easy to use reporting interface more for management level users. Uh, looking at potentially having a basic CRM or complaints handling module. And some of the features in this, you know, relate pretty closely to the customer support and chat features that are part of a mobile banking and web banking app. So we might try and 
sort of merge those those projects together as they touch on both the, the client facing aspect of the app as well as some of the staff facing features in the web app itself. And then we've got a couple projects related to you know really functional modules like accounting, insurance, or collateral management. And then still at the level of the Finrac or MIFOSEC platform, we are potentially going to have a project looking to do an integration with Lendo. So Nyan would maybe monitor, would maybe be mentoring that. So we'll have more details up about that that soon. And then as Rahul mentioned, we're looking to find a student to help us provide an integration with the Gates Foundation's uh, Mojo Loop uh, open source payments platform, as this would be a really valuable integration to have in place so we can help have a lab environment for our community to innovate and really demonstrate what the payment ecosystem of the future will look like. And then lastly, you know, we're going to have a couple other projects, but an important one that we're looking to, to get worked on is really uh, enhancing the scalability and performance of Finneract to scale to support millions of clients as we have, you know, a number of partners and customers who are reaching this level of clients and they're starting to hit some bottlenecks and helping to address this at the, the community level would be ideal. And then lastly, just looking at our MIFOSEX web app, we're going to continue to refine and enhance the user experience, design, and performance of our core uh, app that the staff use, which is our web app or what we used to call the community app. We're going to work on version two of our online banking app. So version one was worked on last year. And so we'll be continuing to add new functionalities there and really improve this omni-channel banking experience for the, the underbank. As we've rolled out, you know, the online banking app and a mobile banking app and more client-facing applications, we need to have uh, a better administrative portal to help manage these users, manage the configuration of these apps, and manage the communication with clients through these client-facing apps. So that's what that pro project would focus on. And then lastly, you know, we might try and have a project related to building out more of a helper or configuration wizard to allow customers and institutions when they're going through the app for the first time to have a self-guided configuration to help them utilize the software and get up to speed on their own without the support of a local individual. And then, Lastly, around the mobile app, we're going to continue the, the great work that's been contributed to our field operations app for, for staff, which began, you know, as a project under Ishan uh, many years ago, and we've continued to evolve that through the years. So now we're working on version 5.0 of our Android field operations app. So we'll be continuing to enhance the architecture of that, as well as adding new features and design improvements. We'll also be working on version 3.0 of Mifos Mobile, which is our mobile banking app, which we really enhanced a great deal last year. And then we'll also be having a project related to version 2.0 of our mobile wallet framework, which we kicked off last year. And so there's a lot of you know exciting innovation on the front around all these web and, and mobile apps. And these are just a couple of screenshots of the apps you can see here. But I want to, you know, make sure we've got plenty of time for questions. So I'm gonna now just open the floor to to any questions that our students have. So. And I think my slides might have frozen. So. Okay, everyone. So I'll, you know, just open the floor now to any questions the students have, and welcome the mentors to provide any insight they want to have, give, or answer any questions that, that come up. So please, everybody, take it away. And these questions can be, you know, about the tech stack, about projects, about features, about the community, about, you know, what we're looking for in applicants. So pretty much anything is fair game. Uh, can I ask something? Yeah, go ahead, Abe. Okay. Uh, so I have doubts regarding the self-service administrative app and the web self-service app. Both of these uh, have to have an integration with the 
chatting module so this thing should be uh, it will be implemented in the back end by us or it can use any other service from outside like i have searched some services but they have a, a part of them is free but uh, then it's paid as well so do we have to implement it on our own completely or we can use something else like there are some available uh, yeah, we, like chat 21 Yeah, we we yes. want to use use something else, but something that we can be that can be you know embedded that's still compliant with our license and distributed as open source. So we don't want you to have to build everything from scratch, but we don't want uh, the users to be dependent upon you know like a non open source or a solution that requires a license. So we do want to identify you know some library or component that can be bundled with the software and utilized. so i have identified some which are open source their sdk is available on github okay yeah so, so i think in your application recommend which ones you would uh, propose and and why and then the mentors will help you feedback on those so yeah, if you have so any continued questions about that abe we're going to i think we'll we'll post a few additional use cases around that that haven't been posted yet too so as it will be integrated on both sides the admin portal and the web self service app so it must be matlab i will be working on a single project only na so but how will we uh, integrate in both of uh, both of them at the same time so we we'll, we've had to do this a little bit in the past too so we'll make sure you know that any dependencies you have on projects with other students like those dependencies or are squared away up front so we'll be having you know the student who's working on either the mobile banking app or the online banking app focused on the client facing aspects of the the chat solution but that at the self service admin portal level you know you'll be focusing on more of the UI in the web app that allows the staff to directly follow up on these chats and support communication with their clients So these are all good questions you're bringing up Abhi so thank you for demonstrating that you know level of thought and interaction with the the use cases so far so. Okay so basically we'll be working mainly on the UI part this year you are trying to say Yeah for the self service admin portal it's more so going to be around the UI based on what uh, support or chat tool gets chosen by the intern working on the the client facing aspect of the solution and this will be integrated with the community app or it will be separate from it completely uh i think that's still i think that's still an open question so yeah i think we'll make that that decision like based on the input of the mentors and some of our partners who are okay. utilizing this most closely so so accordingly if i try to make some mock ups so i should consider the ui of community app yeah yeah I, for the mock ups i'd have the look and feel you know look like that of the community app as they want it to feel like a integrated user experience related to that okay and also about the app configuration uh, for that we have to consider both the web app and the android app Yeah, we like for the look and feel and the the logos that would be displayed. Ideally, it'd be one, you know, central point in which they could configure, you know, the logo for either the the web or mobile app. So we'd be thinking about both, yeah, the web and mobile app look and feel configuration. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Abhi. Okay, I think we got a couple of questions uh, in the chat as well, and one of them is my favorite. Uh, what are you looking uh, for in a student's proposal? Uh, Ed, do you want to take this one up, or should I go for it? No, you go right ahead, Ishan. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, from the proposal like uh, you know we wouldn't want we would want you to t- 
tell us how would you like to solve a problem and how would you like to proceed towards the project throughout the summer. Uh, a very detailed plan uh, indeed uh, stands out. But uh, what we also would like to now see is uh, what level of commitment are you planning to give towards the project? And if you have any other plans or commitments during the summer, in the past, we've had students where they've not told us about their other commitments and they have indeed failed uh, the Google Summer of Code program. Uh, the guidelines have become much more stricter and we would also want our evaluations to be uh, to adhere to the guidelines. So if you have anything uh, planned up for the summer, make sure you write down in the proposal. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the mentors and the admins will work with you. Uh, to make sure the process and your internship is as smooth as possible. But uh, be upfront, uh, open up with, uh, with the people you want to work with. So I think uh, that would be the most important thing we would look at in the proposals. Thanks for, for sharing that perspective, Ishan. Do any of the other mentors, you know, want to give their input on what they're looking for as you know what they see as a strong quality or great aspect of a, a good proposal. Uh, hey everyone, uh, I actually shared these uh, points with some other student who was also having the same question, and it actually uh, more or less I reiterates to what Ishan just said. So. Uh, those GSOC experience, you may just go through the answer that I just posted in the chat. So, yeah. Thank you, Tarun. Yeah, so we collectively, you know, as an org, we'll try to make all the decisions around students, you know, as a collective body of mentors. So, to get to, to Mohawk's question about the interview process. So, you know, your applications will be due by March 27th, is which is when I think the applications are due or right around that date. And then there's a period, you know, between then and when the student proposals are actually announced in which we, you know, review and rank the proposals. We conduct these set interviews and then we request slots from Google. So the interviews will be done after you've submitted your application, but prior to us uh, selecting uh, students and getting slots allocated by by Google. So stay tuned. You know, after you've submitted your application, if you've been one of these shortlisted candidates, you're reaching out to conduct these interviews. And I'm just going through, and I'll let the other mentors too go through some of the other questions that are coming through the chat. So, Sridhar, to answer your question about Spinnerack and Mobile 2.0, that's basically like our Android field operations app for Mesos X. So, this is an application, a mobile application that's used by the staff. So, typically, you know, a loan officer who will be able to take the mobile application and directly be able to, you know, enter repayment data while they're out there in the field with clients, be able to, you know, take photos or conduct surveys with the clients if need be. So it's an application that's used by the staff of the financial institution to be able to do their day-to-day -day work when they're out there in the field and away from their uh, desktop or laptop or away from the, the office. And so it syncs offline so they have you know, access to the, the data they need while they're out there in the field. Uh, yes, Abe, you can directly be in touch with the mentors, but as I said earlier, you know, we encourage you to, to try and be as open as you can in your communications and having as much of your communications through the, the mailing list as we can see, you know, that you're able to, to communicate openly and the rest of the community can share and giving input and advice to the, the questions that you might have. But in terms of the, the draft itself, you can utilize the submit a draft feature now and have that draft submitted so that way the mentors can directly provide comments. So rather than, yeah, like directly, you know, send a Google Doc to the mentor, it would be best just to share the, the draft proposal now as you'll be able to edit and refine that 
until the date of submission. And then Nista, uh, the question for Android Client 5.0. So the notifications framework would be, you know, integrating with the existing notification framework that uh, works right now at both the web app as well as the mobile banking app level. And so these would be delivering in-app notifications to the staff. And then the SMS communications would be more so you know, utilizing our existing SMS integrations, but allowing uh, like a, a receipt to be generated and sent to a client via SMS when a loan officer is conducting payments in the field. So they're a little similar, a little dissimilar. And Yashan, you might be able to better answer that question too. So. I think um, uh, SMS communication is not related to the push notifications, but the notifications framework is. However, it's going to be tricky to implement uh, because uh, the app also works offline, and uh, I'm not really sure how have we implemented the notifications framework for the community app. I will have to dig into the Finarac project and the MiFos project for that. So I think we can take this one offline. Okay, thanks, uh, Ishan. And then, Ankit, to your question, or let me see, I think there was a question prior to that. Uh, so, so Mohit, for the question regarding the payment gateway, so right now, like we're working on having, and Anthony can respond a little bit about this. Right now, we're working on integrating with Bionic as a proof of concept integration. Uh, the Mojo Loop might be another, you know, API that's easily documented that we'd integrate with. But then, provided we have some clear APIs from mobile money providers in other regions, we'd want to also, you know, work on integrations with those as part of the project as. You know, Anthony and Steve will be some of the mentors who will provide some additional feedback on this, but they'll have some more clear uh, use cases of what would be worked on and what are the remaining items of work that need to be implemented for the payment gateway. But the sort of the prioritization of integrations right now is Bionic as the first one, potentially Mojo Loop, and then we're looking at some of the other mobile money providers in East and West Africa that have clearly documented APIs to, to work on for that. And then Ankit, uh, for like, so Pranjo could respond a bit to this. So we're still, you know, really trying to give better prioritization to some of the tasks we've listed under the web app enhancements. And we're also trying to continue to get additional user feedback into what, you know, they want to see most enhancing the user experience. But for now, you know, I would just try and give a small overview of how you might potentially implement those set enhancements, but directly interact with some of the mentors to get more specific questions uh, answered. And Pranzo, if you have anything else to add about Ankit's question, I'm just going to continue to go through other questions that are coming up. Sure. Uh, so Ankit, uh, right now we are uh, in talks of uh, setting a priority list and a minimum number of tasks that need to be completed inside the project. Uh, we'll post it on the JIRA page as soon as we have the list ready. But uh, as of now, uh, it's work under progress, the priority list. Thanks, Pranjo. And then Aditya, uh, so it is still a high priority to have the mobile banking app 1.0 project for GSOC. We've got a good set of use cases we'd like to implement. We're just working with you know some of the lead architects of the Finerac CN platform to make sure that the data layer and the access to building a client-facing app is available. So that's something you know I'm discussing with Rajan and some of our other uh, Finerac CN mobile app mentors around. So, so stay tuned as we're going to have a bit more clarity 
on that, but it but it is you know high priority to try and have that app worked on for for GSOC. We just need to make sure that the right level of access is there in the application. In the event you know that that access isn't there, we might still explore you know building out all the views and building out the app itself, and then plugging the the back end in later on. So that's only under consideration right now. And then Sean or Tarun, are you able to handle Sridhar's question? It might be something we need to take offline with Rajan as he's most familiar with uh, the mobile apps and the Finerac. Oh, you're on now, Rajan, so I'll let you take Sridhar's question. Hopefully you saw it there around integrating a one-time password service. Oh, Rajan, okay, yeah, I see you're off mute now. Yes, so getting the like OTB services. So like uh, I don't know like uh, we have like uh, which OTB, OTB service we are going to integrate, but uh, for the like uh, for the verification passcode, uh, like on the initial registration we can. But I didn't find any like uh, like any uh, API for in the FinRex region. So in which we can directly. Uh, like go and sign up because in Finrex CN mobile, uh, like admin uh, make a, any any user and just give the credential. So for uh, Finrex CN mobile OTP, I don't think so. It will work. Like it's a any use case. Okay, thanks, uh, Rajan, and then. Sridhar, if you have additional questions, you can type them in the chat or follow up directly with Raja and are on the list too. And then Abhilash, if you had a question, please you know come off mute and share it or you can type it in the chat. And then while you're either coming off mute or typing the question, Abhilash, I think Abe had a question around prioritization between online banking app 2.0 and the self-service admin portal. So if we were able to find qualified interns for both, we got enough slots, Abe, we'd like to take students on for each of those. I think in terms of you know just value and needs of the community, the self-service admin portal would be higher priority as you know that's a, a valuable tool that's needed for uh you know any partner any institution that's using either the mobile or online banking app but we you know provided we can get enough slots and we have enough qualified students we'd like to have both of those projects worked on thank you ishan for for joining us today So we still have a, a couple more minutes for any questions that you have, and then just want to, you know, re-emphasize to everyone that if you have a question you don't get answered today, uh, please, you know, share it on the list. If it's something that's related to Finneract or the Finneract at all, like send it to the dev list. And then if it's only only related to Mifos X, you can just do the Mifos list. But you know, first and foremost, you should probably post to the dev list, and then if it's only related to Mifos X will, you know, just direct the traffic to that list. And sorry, I think someone had a had, had a question. So is it you, Vishan? Uh, like uh, Sridhar, like uh, he can propose a OTP for the Mofi, Mifos Mobile. So, like uh, we can agree with that because Mifos Mobile have a sign-up feature. Uh, we would like, uh, but for your kind of information, like I have worked with we already have OTP services uh, like uh, as you uh, remember we have SMS services on our backend FinRec uh, so it's like uh, it, it, it do everything like so we have a, like a two type OTP uh, using uh, like email or uh, using the SMS I want to know that sir whether I can propose yeah. an idea which is not relevant to MIFOS open sources open source project but Related to the poor families for bringing them. For, uh, 
So, well, like, uh, like I have a little, uh, small question. Like, uh, for, like, where do you wanna use the OTP services? So that's a question. Like, uh, uh, we have a like uh, uh, OTP services in our FinRec 1.0 uh, that does uh, like. Uh, whenever user login, uh, it can like it will like user choose uh, which type of OTP he wants uh, like using email or uh, using SMS. So he he can get uh, both of from both ways. And uh, uh, like someone is asking, Adit, is it uh, like too late for contributing? Yeah, yeah. What? On that last, oh, on Abhilash's last question, uh, Rajan or Tarun, could you address that? Uh, I added this, so I can, uh, so here, right now, like, uh, individual collection sheet uh, logic uh, that, uh, here. So this, uh, we need to just enhance this something more level. So we would uh, like give you the um, uh, the UI mockups, and uh, like we will uh, like uh, change some of the like uh, user interface, uh, mm -hmm. like how the user will enter some of the things, and the, uh, like uh, almost the logic that will work in the with the in back end uh, would be the same that uh, already wrote it. Okay, thanks, uh, Rajan. And then Abhilash, you can continue any followed up questions you have on that yeah, later. Uh, add one thing. Uh, yes, uh, Abhilash, have a question like uh, regarding the offline feature. Abhilash, like uh, right now, we have uh, a feature of for the. Uh, I want to the yeah, we have a feature for syncing the clients or their data. Uh, so we select and uh, we sync. So right now, uh, so what uh, what uh, this feature enhancement will do? Uh, yeah, we we are going to write the sync adapter that will automatically uh, sync the clients and their data. That uh, that will not wait to select the clients and then sync. And the uh, sync adapter will do do uh, like uh, on the and uh, list you are like in the client list right now is the normal list now we apply that according to each and every uh, uh, sign in user so uh, user can see the all the uh, clients that is assigned to in this in this uh, in the client uh, but he wanted to go in a search functionality i can search anybody and can see yeah there's a thing Thanks, Rajan. And then, uh, yes, yeah, Sridhar, yes, you can propose a UI UX changes. So we encourage that. Yes. And, and then, uh, oh, yeah, one second, yeah, Rajan. Uh, I'm just going to address Vishant. So, Vishant, like, you know, while I think your idea for the food for the poor app is noble, like for, you know, for projects related to Mifos and Finrac for. Google Summer of Code, like we're only, you know, going to be entertaining and seriously considering proposals that are related to, you know, projects that leverage our open source stack. So uh, we, we've seen the proposal you've made, but, you know, we appreciate that idea. But given, you know, the selection process and the level of need we have in the community, we have to focus on, you know, projects for Mifos directly related to our technology stack. Yeah, and uh, here the students have a, can you propose a UI? Yes, actually you can. And uh, Ishan, if Ishan, he will be tell you, he will tell you like, uh, this is the strongest part, part of the proposal. So you better do it. Okay. So any, anybody have a question? Yeah, we're just about getting to the end of the, the hour too. And I know a lot of people I think joined 
towards the second half, but we'll, you know, be sending out, you know, later this afternoon, evening, the recording and Hello. from our session today. So. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, yes, Vishal. Uh, yeah. so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So actually, sir, uh, I want to know that, sir, whether I can propose an idea which is not relevant to me first open source project, but related to poor families for upbringing them from starvation and from hunger, sir. Actually, sir, uh, I've just mailed my proposal to the official uh, MIPOS uh, organization. Actually, sir, my idea is not related to the... Hello? Yeah, no, we, we hear you, Vishant, and we received it, and that's what I was addressing earlier. We'll we'll take a look at the proposal, but for it to be considered at all, you'd need to, you know, somehow, you know, integrate it or demonstrate that it's utilizing the MIFOS Interact uh, technology stack as, you know, we have an overwhelming number of students that will be applying. We have a high volume and a need within our community for projects related to our software, so unfortunately, you know, we're not able to consider ideas outside of, you know, the scope of our of our stack and software itself, even if they're aligned with the overall our mission. But we, you know, encourage the continued success in your your efforts with that application going forward. So Okay. So I wanna thank all of our Oh yes, go on. No, so, so Vishant, we like we wouldn't be able to consider a proposal mm -hmm. like yours that's out of the side of the scope of Mifos in Finrac. But so. uh, it was all it was all about the poor families. So actually, I thought that uh, it's going to be novel project for your company. Yeah, I, no, I understand the mission, and I deeply appreciate what you're looking to do with the application. But we, you know, will not have like mentors available and likely not students available or slots available to work on such a project so i'd encourage you to try and see if there's a way that you know the project you're looking to do could be powered or built on top of interact and then evolve your proposal to support the same as a potential option and we are you know getting to the end of the hour now so i want to thank all of our mentors who came on and answered questions and shared their experience with gtalk and I want to thank all the aspiring students who came on and those who weren't able to join the whole call. We'll send along the recording and the slide deck. But you know, definitely, as I said earlier, uh, be open, introduce yourselves on the mailing list, continue to contribute, collaborate, and help others in the community, and make sure you get uh, draft submissions of your proposals out there earlier. And we're looking forward with the, hopefully the chance to work with all of you throughout the upcoming summer. So thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of Thank your you, sir. evening, day, or morning. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vishant. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.